everyone, welcome back. My name is Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're gonna to take a look at a new Z-Wave device from AEO Tech, uh, or AEON Labs. Uh, they're the makers of a bunch of Z-Wave products. I've used many of them in the past. They're very reliable products. And I've never had anything but good things to say about them. One of my favorite sensors that they have is actually the 5-in-1 uh, sensor. Uh, you can see that I have one right up here. And that measures temperature, uh, motion, a uh, bunch of other things. But we can talk about that in a different video. Today we'll be looking at the Aeon Tech uh, wall moat. This is the four button version. So if you can see it's divided by a subtle little line in there. It's actually got a glass front to it and there is a two button version as well. The two button version will allow you to activate up to eight scenes within your house and this four button one will actually allow up to 16 scenes from this simple little removable button. Stay tuned, let's take a look. So guys, before we get going, I do want to take a minute to remind you that if you haven't already, to go ahead and subscribe down below. And if you maybe have someone you think would be interested in it, I'd love it if you'd share my channel with them, share the link to this video, suggest to your friends and followers that they follow as well. Looking to build a community here and if you are interested in this product or you know people that are interested in home automation, I'd love it if you'd share it with them and help us grow the channel. So guys, today we're going to take a look at this new sensor from AEON Tech. AEO Tech. We're going to call it AEO Tech because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but it's a company that if you're in home automation in any way, shape, or form, I'm sure you've heard of in the past. They make a lot of really great Z-Wave sensors. Uh, I have a few other products I'm going to be testing in the com coming weeks, but the one that I was excited to get to first was this. Um, this is a four-switch removable sensor. No, it's not a sensor. This is a four button touch sensitive sensor, or touch sensitive device that can be easily mounted to the wall using a uh, 3M back plate. It's very thin, so this will go to your wall really nicely and it's not gonna look bad. When you remove the switch, it's just a simple white plate, so even that would look fine against your wall. Um, and then the, the wall plate itself, connects via magnet, nice and strong, so that's not gonna fall off your wall. You could mount this to pretty much anything, uh, back of your bed, the wall, night table. Uh, I, I'm gonna put a few of them, I think, next to light switches on the walls because this is gonna add the functionality that allows me to control things like my LifeX bulbs, my Philips Hue, my Sonos speakers, without needing to pull out a cell phone or mobile phone to connect to an app to do it. Um, I think this adds a little bit of functionality that is often missing in home automation and that's adding some of the familiar familiarity and simpleness back that your typical light switch does. I used to use um, some Insteon wall switches for this. They were hardwired switches with eight buttons in them. Reliability wasn't always what I wanted it to be, but it did serve a good purpose and that was just adding back some of that functionality that people expect. Uh, to be able to turn on and off lights and devices around your house with a simple switch. So I tested this out for the last uh, week or two now and uh, the battery holds strong. It is a rechargeable battery and if you look at the back of the device here you have a little uh, USB charger right here uh, to recharge the battery. You also have a uh, pairing button that is at the top here and that's pretty much all that's on the back other than some little description of the device itself showing you one, two, three, and four buttons. So they're actually one, two, three, four. And the buttons themselves are touch sensitive. So one tap will give you uh, one of your scenes on each button. A tap and hold will give you a double beep and will indicate that you have done the hold button. And the other one is a swipe down or a swipe up which would indicate up or down movement. And since you have four buttons, that's four times four, you get 16 actual scenes that you can activate from this one little switch, which is actually pretty cool from such a simple looking device. Now, the device itself does have a audio feedback. So when you push it, you're gonna hear a beep. You'll also see 
a little light light up to let you know that it has uh, activated and sent off that command. And the final thing is, uh, you guys can't see that at home, but it's actually vibrating a little bit when I do that, so it gives me a little haptic feedback to let me know that the device has registered a command. So I have tried this. I haven't had any range issues. I've gone pretty much all around my house. Now I have a lot of Z-Wave devices, so obviously um, my network's pretty extensive and I haven't had any range problems or any issues like that. I even actually took it in the car with me. Some of you'll remember that I did a video uh, where I used uh, Google Assistant on my phone to open and close my garage, and that was because my garage door openers had stopped working the remote side of it and uh, that was an easy way to solve it. So I actually tried taking this in the car as well and I hooked up through OpenHab the buttons to open and close my garage doors as well as uh, turn on my lights outside. So if I'm coming home at late at night, my lights have already turned off. Simple touch of one of these buttons, I was able to turn on the lights and another touch of one of the buttons, I was able to open my garage door and close it. So maybe not your first thought of where to use this from the car, but it actually came in pretty handy. Um, and I may look at putting one in there to, to add to my voice control of my garage doors. Uh, if you're interested in that video, by the way, I've linked it here up above. Take a look. A uh, little project, something simple you can do on a weekend if you too are having trouble opening and closing your garage doors. So I'm going to run you through a really quick video here on how I got this up and running in OpenHab. Uh, as well smart things was super simple to pair it with it's just a simple z-wave binding it was found in both those applications super simple um, and some of the rules that I set up are, are pretty simple just like you would with any uh, z-wave switches whether it's a wall switch or a motion sensor uh, you simply just look for the feedback of the different buttons within your application and then you can assign actions to each of them my recommendation would definitely be the four button switch. I think that you get the most functionality out of that. I guess obviously unless you had a situation which only required two buttons, um, I would probably stick to the four. I, and I think that the buttons are big enough that they're, they're easy to touch. It's not like you're gonna miss it and accidentally hit the wrong button. Again, the only thing that I think is if there, if there is a negative, the only thing is how I would go about identifying which each of these buttons to do. Obviously for me, I'm gonna know what they do right off the bat but any guests or visitors to the house would probably be a little intimidated by which button to go ahead and push. I'd love to get a uh, laser uh, engraver to actually maybe try engraving something right on the glass of this. Uh, some simple buttons. Uh, potentially I'll play around with some labels or try to find some way to mark it up. I guess you could even use some sort of marker or just write right on it if you wanted to make it fun. Maybe you're a little bit creative or an artist and you could actually draw a little picture on there. Uh, maybe some nice icons or something like that if you're, you've are you got a little bit of a creative artistic side to you. Uh, might be a fun way to mark it up. But overall, I think it's a great product. I highly recommend it. So adding the device in OpenHab was really simple. I used the paper interface and I did a Z-Wave binding search. Double click the button on the back of the device and it was very quickly found. Gave it a name, Aeon Tech Wall Moat. We added that in. I jumped over into the other uh, interface which is Habmin and I did this just to look and make sure that everything with the node was found properly and sure enough it was. Next I jumped into my config file. I wanted to add a section in my items file for Z-Wave Wall Moat. And to do this, I jumped into the REST API, and I used that to search for the names of what had been found for each of the items. And this way I can just match an item to the thing values. And I created, I believe there were seven of them, different uh, items to, to hold all of these values. And that was it. All of them were pretty much added without any issues. Uh, little typo there at the bottom, I did two to, uh, twice but uh, found that out after but essentially once this was all set up and running the device was added and I was able to recognize the button pushes into each one of the items and from there I created some rules just like standard overall I think that uh, the device itself was super simple to set up uh, functionality worked really well and once I had set up a few rules I was able to control everything uh, similar to any switch in OpenHab Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've been enjoying these videos. And like I mentioned at the beginning, if you haven't already, take a second and subscribe, trying to grow, grow the community. I'd also love it if you know of anyone else or anyone that you can forward these links or videos to and help them join in with us. Uh, 
There's sharing options below. Of course, you all know how to do that. So share it out with your friends. As the community grows, it means more resources, more videos, more information that I can provide back to you. Also, if you have anything that you'd like me to talk about, look at, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Had a few really good suggestions lately, and I'm going to see if I can take a look at those. And otherwise, that's it for today. I have some more uh, products from AEO Tech coming. Um, so look forward to those. And guys, that's it for today.